Well, good morning, folks, and welcome once again to our YouTube uh, presentation of our worship service here at Westdale United Church. It's uh, good that uh, a number of you join in uh, with us each Sunday, and uh, we're very pleased to be able to continue this uh, service, as it were, uh, on YouTube uh, while we're gearing up to become more of a uh, in-person kind of uh, worship uh, service program. But in the meantime, we're, we're certainly glad that you have joined us. We'll start today with the lighting of our Christ candle. We light this candle as a symbol of love, peace, care, and comfort. May all who open themselves to this light walk always in the ever-present light of Christ. And now let us continue with the call to worship. Let us praise the Lord in the assembly of the upright. Let us praise the Lord in the congregation of the faithful. Let us praise the Lord, for the works of the Lord are great. Let us praise the Lord, for he is gracious and full of compassion. Let us praise the Lord, for he has declared to his people the power of his works. And let us praise the Lord with our whole heart. And in unison, our opening prayer. Grant us always, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of his congregation in our community that may, many may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Amen. Let us join together in listening and singing to our opening hymn, Voices United, 375, Spirit of Gentleness, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Let us continue now with the prayer of illumination. Since we do not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our scripture text today continues with word, the words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus, reading from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for, everlast for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our anthem today is Like a River in My Soul. Like a River in My Soul. Let us enjoy the presentation.
Well, today uh, we're going to uh, reflect on the words of the Apostle Paul uh, as he wrote to the church uh, in Ephesus. And uh, it's uh, kind of interesting that uh, Paul has taken his uh, typical kind of stance in trying to nurture and encourage and, and almost be a bit of a father figure for the, the early uh, development of the Christian church and the Christian churches uh, in, his, uh, in his area and jurisdiction. <clears throat> Paul was really interested in the welfare of the early churches. Um, he says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making best use of time because the days are evil. <clears throat> look carefully then how you walk, and he means through life not as unwise, but wise. In this particular scripture text, we find Paul providing counsel about how to live lives, how the early Christians should actually live their lives in order to move forward in their growth as disciples of Christ. How you walk through your life, your personal style, your characteristics, your tendencies, your biases need to be all in check, Paul says. There's an emphasis on using time wisely as well, not spending time with, with things that don't have much consequence of any impact in them. <clears throat> and how to cultivate a proper relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Some versions in the scripture basically use the word, be careful. Paul is basically saying to the Christians in Ephesus, be careful. Be careful how you life, your life is lived out. Be careful how you walk through life. I was listening to another phrase um, that was often used in, a, in an interview by a fairly well-known personality. And, and he used the term, that's how I roll. That's how I roll, meaning that's how he walks through life. That's, that's how he behaves. That's, that's the way he says things and does things. I remember my mother in particular uh, saying the, the phrase, be careful. And I never really thought much about it, but as I reflected back, it, it kind of sprung out from my memory, as it were, that uh, she often said, uh, every time I left the house, I mean, even right up until the, the uh, years uh, between 18 and 20 years old, when I was a, a young person and, and still living at home, and, and every time I'd leave to go somewhere to visit a friend, my mother would always say, now be careful. It's kind of interesting that in some interpretations of this scripture, the same phrase is being used and being attributed to Paul talking to the Ephesians. You know, actually, sometimes I, I hear my dear wife say that uh, to me uh, when I'm leaving home. She'll often say, uh, now be careful. And she never misses saying, I love you. And that's one of the last two or three words I hear every time I walk out of the door. You know, I didn't always appreciate my mother saying, be careful. I kind of thought that she was maybe being a little overprotective of this 18 or 19 year old uh, person. But for Paul, he was seriously considered about, ser seriously concerned about living life properly in the face of what he called evil days. <clears throat> when I read this scripture text, I kind of wondered what he meant by evil days. What did he mean by that? Well, let me tell you a little bit of a story. Well, we could say that the past two years have been filled with evil days because some people were becoming 
a little unhinged, as it were, from being in, a, in the lockdown and too much time on their hands by themselves, being alone. And actually it was recorded that one fellow was saying that he had just been talking about the lockdown with his microwave and toaster while drinking his coffee. And they all agreed that things were getting bad. He didn't mention anything to the washing machine as she puts a different spin on everything. And certainly not to the fridge, as he is acting cold and distant. And in the end, the iron straightened him out and she said, everything will be fine. No situation is too pressing. And he continued his conversation with these articles in his home and the vacuum was very unsympathetic told him to just suck it up. But the fan was more optimistic and hoped it would all soon blow over. And then the toilet looked a bit flushed when he asked its opinion and didn't say anything, but the doorknob told him to get a grip. The front door said he was unhinged. So he, he, he looked to the curtains who told him well, you guessed it, pull yourself together. We'll talk about the evil days filled with idle time, like during the pandemic. <clears throat> but for Paul, it simply was anything that distracted early Christians in Ephesus from taking action, which reduced building or cultivating a relationship with God. What does Paul identify as the areas the early Christians, and by the way, we too, in present day, must be careful about? Well, Paul went on to say in, in the no uncertain terms that our words, what we say, what we say are what other people hear, and others hear God through what we say. And because they show God to the world, we really do need to be careful about what we say. And Paul said, our thoughts, we have to be careful in our thoughts because they determine our actions and words. What are the ramifications of what you are thinking. What would happen if you were to act on what you are thinking? What would happen if you were to say what you were thinking? Would it show God's love to those around you? Would others understand God's love better because of what you said or did? <clears throat> that was a basic challenge to the people in Ephesus. And thirdly, our actions. Would others understand God's love better? Better because of what we did. What would happen if you were to act on what you are thinking? What would happen if you were to say what you were thinking? Would it show God's love to those around you? Would others understand God's love better because of what you said or did? <clears throat> well, those are the kinds of things Paul was talking about to the church in Ephesus. The Ephesians were a, a really new church that was developing a sense of discipleship, of believing in the messages of Christ, and he was wanting to be sure as kind of as, as this parent figure, this, this nurturer, this encourager of how this early church should develop. Paul entreated them to live wisely. Let wisdom of God be their guide because they needed to understand God's will. You know, with all of those 
kinds of directives that were coming out of Paul's writings. One could easily surmise that there were there were those among the group uh, in the church of, of of Ephesus that said, like like, how am I to have fun if I have to be so careful about uh, what I say and what I do and what I think? Well, Paul had an answer to that too. He said, "There's no reason why a person who lives within." the perspective of God's direction can have fun. And so how do we make our lives the best of time in the sight of God? Seeing the opportunities in the time that you have or have been given to have fun, but also to uh, show your discipleship and your faith within the boundaries of what the Apostle Paul is trying to say to the church in Ephesus. Taking the opportunities to try and encourage others in what's good for the soul, what's good for the spirit within. Well, this past weekend, my wife and I had the joy of uh, entertaining uh, one of our families for uh, a little barbecue and <clears throat> in, in this uh, one family there are three teenagers. Two of them who go to university, uh, well they, they're enrolled in university, they unfortunately haven't been able to go to university because they're doing their studies online and paying university fees as hundreds and a f number of thousands of young people across the country are doing as well. And then one, the third young, the youngest one, still uh, finishing uh, last year in high school, but did a great portion of her studies online as well. But fortunately, they, they each got part-time jobs uh, over the past uh, six months, and uh, this was a bit of a, a breakthrough for them. They had something to do to go outside of the house rather than staying at home, always just learning online, as it were. And they weren't quite sure that the past two years was uh, a time of a, a waste of time. There was two years of their young lives that they really hadn't been able to participate in, in sports or activities or uh, even socializing with, with school friends. And in a very grandfatherly way, I guess I sat there and listened to their angst, as it were, and I, I, I said to them, there, there is one good thing about it is to realize the experience you're having is actually good for the soul. It's good for the soul to be able to do something productive, even though it may be working as a clerk in this store, or working as a, a clerk in another store, or, or doing something different. They may, they may not see that kind of activity as being that significant in their lives. It is very significant for those who actually make a living doing that on a regular, daily, and yearly basis. But for these young people, they needed to be encouraged that not to waste the time, that this was a waste of time. It was good for the soul for them to live their lives wisely and take in the positive things that, that came their way with the interactions of different people that they would never have met before. Take in those opportunities to learn what life is all about in, in, in the society in which they live. There is value in it, I was trying to encourage them to see. Paul was saying, 
Live your life in a wise way, not an unwise way. And don't waste time because the evil days of not doing anything will just consume you and lead you into things that are not necessarily appropriate or productive. And they would lead you into thinking there's nothing to be gained. And the pandemic had a big effect on people's attitudes towards that. Well, when I was reading Paul's uh, narrative in this particular scripture text, I tried to summarize it by looking at how did that affect us? How did it affect uh, those of us who attend Westdale United Church for the most part? Well, I found a commentator that, that spoke exactly to my concern. He addressed the Apostle Paul's challenge to live a wise life, and to do so was to be an encourager. He said, many of us um, are, are, are retired or, or beyond our, our work-life uh, experiences. So what else is there to, to take from Paul's words if we were to apply them to us personally? Well, this particular commentaries commentator said here's how all of us should become encouragers just as i was trying to encourage uh, these three grandchildren we all can become encouragers pray for god to make you an encourager that's the first step ask him to help you eliminate your self-centeredness and grow in the desire to build others up Secondly, make encouragement a daily discipline. A reminder in your calendar might be a useful tool to send someone an encouraging note, an email, a text, or a phone call. We're all capable of those kinds of things. Thirdly, to pray to God to show you how to, to encourage, how to bring specifics to someone that you have in mind and concentrate, concentrate on how encouraging that person can be to be a, an accomplished person in a daily activity. And he also commented on using scriptures. If you use scriptures, if you're able, nothing is more encouraging than from the words of God. There's a minefield of messages to be found uh, in the Psalms, for example. And to be specific in what you say is really important as an encourager. A note from a friend including one or two specific comments that uh, you saw grace in their life and, and what, they, what life meant to them was so much in terms of the importance to what they did and who they were. And lastly, this commentator said, pray that God would create a culture of encouragement in your own church. A church that loves each other in specific, tangible ways. And don't get discouraged if people don't return your encouragement. Well, if we address how we walk through life, as Paul describes working through the presence of the Holy Spirit, Paul's conclusion is that we will surely become closer in our relationship with God. And if there was a final note that came out of this particular uh, piece of uh, encouragement that Paul had to the church in Ephesus uh, that he wrote in Ephesians chapter 6 is that do what we can to be encouragers so that we all grow closer in our personal relationship with God. Not to let the evil days that we face when time goes on and nothing really happens of significance takes over. 
as we walk through this life of ours in this coming week, may we be a positive encouragement to others, always. Amen. Our responsive hymn now is hymn 327, All Praise to Thee, verses 1, 3, and 5. Let us continue now with our prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer. God of creation, God of wonder, hear this offering of prayer and praise as a gift from our thankful hearts. We thank you for the wonders all around us, for grains of sand, the smell of rain falling on dry ground, for the shifting of the seasons and the sound of laughter. We thank you, God, for one another, for the joys and struggles of relationships that nurture us and help us to grow. God, we thank you for your eternal presence in our midst and for the good news of your deep abiding love for all creation. Even as we give thanks, we lift up the concerns that burden us this day. We ask your peace and blessing on all those we have close to our hearts and minds this day whose circumstances are in need of your safe sanctuary of the Spirit's care. We pray for all who are suffering in, suffering in body, mind, or spirit and for all who provide care for the needs of others. We pray for the lonely and the despairing, for those who struggle with addiction, for those who feel trapped in such situations of abuse, for those who are making difficult decisions in life. And so God, we pray for your church and its mission in the world. Bless all of your children, God, and pour your spirit upon us, bringing healing, comfort, and strength wherever it is needed. All this we ask in the name of the one who call us, calls us forward in faith. This we pray in the words we're taught by Jesus himself. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we look to the Lord to help us focus on what we have been given and what we can share and how the gifts we offer this day can bless others at home and around the world. Let us pray. O oh God, we are taught to give as an act of faithfulness. We are reminded that giving is a Christian responsibility. Like Paul taught the early Christians, we are taught to be careful how we live, to live as wise people. So enable us, dear God, in this moment to give thanks at all times and for everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this week, we don't seem to have any particular announcement to have to convey to you. And so we'll continue with our closing hymn, Voices United 504, How Clear Is Our Vocation, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so we now uh, finish our worship service on uh, YouTube for this week. Uh, again, thanks for uh, joining in and uh, uh, being part of uh, this worship service that has been provided for you uh, at this time when, when uh, you're able to stay uh, in a safe and comfortable place uh, to your liking. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And may you see the face of Christ in the face of all those you meet. And may they see the face of Christ in you. Amen. <clears throat>